think this is a critical difference between then and now. Uh, I don't think it's easy to see our political opponents, and, and this is res reciprocal, they don't either, yeah. as friends at all. In fact, we think that they are trying to destroy the America that we cherish, uh, and, and, uh, and the feeling is mutual. So this is a, a, a c clearly a new phase. I think the second thing is that there's a widespread belief, which I share, among Republicans and conservatives that the Democratic Party has become completely gangsterized, not only in the sense of in engaging in types of corruption. I mean, just compare Clinton, uh, Obama and the Bidens on the one hand with, let's say, JFK, uh, Truman and Carter on the other. I mean, the idea that Jimmy Carter would be systematically collecting bribes from foreign countries and using them, funneling them through Rosalind Carter, Billy Carter, money, one LLC going to, this is unthinkable. Um, it was as unthinkable for uh, Carter as it was for Reagan, as it was for Bush. I mean, no one suspected or thought that those people went to the presidency to make money. But with the Clintons, yeah, for sure. With the Obamas, a little motives, motives a little more complex, but yeah, and under Biden, for sure. So uh, not only have Democrats become corrupted and gangsterized, but I think they've become much more comfortable with brazen lying. They will put out false narratives fully knowing that they're false. Um, and they also are willing to trample on civil liberties to a degree that, quite honestly, I have found quite chilling. Uh, I did not expect uh, even the left to uh, to go to this extreme. There's also a, you know, conservatives constantly talk about and very fairly, I think, this double standard. I'm thinking specifically of Lewis, Lewis Lerner, who was head of the IRS. There was this questioning of whether they were targeting conservative, conservative leaning groups uh, and her computer kind of wiped itself out and so did all the backup servers. Now, even taking the politics out of this at all, if you're the IRS and you're having data about people's income taxes and other sorts of sensitive things, if this isn't being kept secure, this is just malpractice on a kind of felonious scale. And yet there were really no consequences as a result of this. Whereas, you know, you donated money to a Senate campaign and you were made into a felon and later pardoned by President Trump, it seems very clear that the you know the long arm of the law is only reaching uh, or predominantly in one direction. Well, I think that's true. Although I think it's it is also necessary to start to move beyond the rhetoric of the double standard. And here's why: <clears throat> the rhetoric of the double standard is itself hinged on a naive premise, and the naive premise is that the other side, the people who you're pointing these double standards out to, those people except uh, that justice should be impartial, except that there should be a single standard. Now, if they don't accept it, then you're pointing to a double standard does no good. It's kind of like going, imagine going to Che Guevara and saying, well, you treat the communists completely differently than you treat the capitalists. He goes, yeah, that's because I'm a Marxist. We think the capitalists are evil. We think the communists are our comrades. So naturally we treat them differently. We are not committed to treating communists and capitalists equally. Right. So from the police state's point of view, there is no double standard. I think the way the, that the police agencies of the government look at it this way. There is one side, one ideological camp and one party that is helping us to build the police state. They're expanding our powers. If we do bad stuff, they cover up for us. And so our job is to cover up for them. And so the whereas the other side, the Republicans, the conservatives, however, ineffectively, they are the party that is blocking the police state or trying to block the police state or inconvenient for the police state. And so from the police state's point of view, we're not being inconsistent. We have a consistent standard of helping our friends, the left, the Democrats, and going after our enemies, the right, the conservatives.